Hey, y'all, it's Tim Miller from The Bulwark. A very ominous bleat from Trump over on his social media site has him threatening to jail Cassidy Hutchison over claims that she made to the January 6th committee, as well as claiming that the committee itself committed crimes. We are deep into crazy town. But, you know, given the fact that this man is on the precipice of being in the White House again, it's, it's pretty important to kind of see where his mind is going when it comes to the retribution and revenge that he has that he has promised. I am your retribution. I am your retribution. Here's the bleat. Our great secret service has totally crushed Cassidy Hutchison, who I barely knew, made up stories about me roughing up secret service agents from the back seat of the Beast limo. Has she now changed her testimony? Will she be prosecuted for what she did and said? What about the unselect J6 committee? They destroyed almost everything, including real evidence and findings. What's going to happen with them? Serious crimes have been committed. Needless to say, uh, it is pretty alarming to have uh, the former president uh, say that you know, he believes that crimes have been committed and that there should be prosecutions against whistleblowers who spoke out against him. Um, the facts here are also wrong, as always. Donald Trump's always lying. And so let's just run through them a little bit. The The testimony in question that Trump is objecting to was Cassidy Hutchison saying that um, the former Secret Service agent and, and then who became the White House Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations, Tony Ornato, had told her that Trump attempted to grab the steering wheel of the beast to redirect it back to the Capitol after his speech on January 6th at the White House, where he told people to march to the Capitol. Tony described him as being irate. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. Trump had been planning to go, and I guess... Some members of the Secret Service, also there was an agent, Bobby Engel, in the car, um, had told him, no, Mr. President, you're going back to the White House. And the story that Ornato relayed to Hutchison was that Trump was upset about this and he lunged at the Secret Service agent. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, Hutchison never testified that she knew this happened. She wasn't there. She said that Tony Ornato told her the story. Um, and Tony Ornato is about as unreliable of a source as humanly imaginable. Um, he was a Secret Service agent who was so, you know, MAGA-pilled that he went to work for Trump directly, which is a very strange trajectory. You don't see a lot of that. And then still went on to work for Trump after the White House. So, okay. So the question is, when was Tony Ornato lying? Was he lying when he told Cassidy that Trump lunged at the Secret Service agent because he wanted to butch the president up and make it, make it seem like he really wanted to go to the Capitol when really Trump is just a fraidy cat who wanted to go back to the White House and like chew on M&Ms and drink Diet Coke while he watched uh, you know, the Capitol burn? I, I don't know. Maybe that's when he lied. Maybe he was trying to butch Trump up a little bit. Or maybe Trump really did want to go to the Capitol. And the Secret Service agents were acting responsibly. And Trump was pissed at them, just like he was pissed when he threw the ketchup on the wall, etc. I don't fucking know. I wasn't there in the Beast. Cassidy Hutchison wasn't there in the Beast. It's Tony Ornato is the one whose testimony is in question here. And, you know, we could get that guy under oath if we want and see if he wants to tell the truth um, when he is obligated to by law. So, you know, this whole thing, um, you know, the facts of it are always wrong, but the, the, the bigger picture here is like, it's, it's pretty chilling. Uh, you know, when, when you combine it with the recent Trump promises to pardon all of the January 6th uh, rioters that he calls hostages. You see the spirit from the hostages and that's what they are as hostages. They've been treated terribly. We will treat those people from January 6th fairly. We will treat them fairly. And if it requires pardons, we will give them pardons. When he's saying he's going to pardon all of the people that stormed the Capitol, that attacked the police, but he wants to prosecute the people who were whistleblowing about his involvement in that insurrection, um, combined you know, that is a powder keg. I mean, that is, you know, basically Trump saying that if he gets back in there, he will give carte blanche to people that, that want to break the law on his behalf and because he will pardon them and he will have his Department of Justice target people that want to stand in the way of that extra legal activity.
extremely, extremely scary stuff. And, um, you know, this this all comes within the context of one other kind of side point in, in his bleat that I think is worth getting into a little bit. When he references the unselect, the select January 6th committee, how they destroyed almost everything, including real evidence and findings. What is he talking about there? It's very hard to sometimes get underneath Trump's blather and figure out like what part of this like diluted uh, multiverse that he lives in is, is, is he actually referencing? And in this case, um, just based on some other things that he's been talking about lately, I think it's pretty clear that he's referencing this notion that um, he ordered, he claims that he ordered 10,000 national guard troops out on January 6th and that that was blocked. Um, this has been something that Trump and his people have been arguing to, to kind of protect him from this notion that he is responsible from what happened on January 6th. Um, his claim is that Tony Ornato, again, we're back to Tony Ornato, testified to this to the January 6th committee um, that, that Trump did ask for this. Uh, again, we're, we're basing this on the claims of a liar, Tony Ornato. But um, the... Uh, the thing is that the January, like the claims that Trump is making here are just not true. Again, um, Trump did not order for 10,000 troops and the January 6th committee did not cover up testimony to the contrary. There's a good post today by a friend of the bulwark here, Thomas Jocelyn in, in Just Security that we'll put up on the screen here that if you kind of want to get into the nitty gritty of this shows you the, the details, the notion that Ornato's testimony was suppressed is not true. Actually, the Secret Service and the January 6th committee had agreed as part of the testimony agreement to not release the transcript initially. The transcript then was released in 2022. Next, the idea that Trump suggested 10,000 National Guardsmen might need to be there. Again, it wasn't a request. It was like a suggestion in a phone call. And the actual context of this was that Trump wanted the the rioters who ended up being the rioters, the protesters protected, not the not the Capitol protected. Trump's acting secretary of defense at the time, Chris Miller, told the committee that Trump did not issue an order to deploy 10,000 National Guardsmen. That's a lot more credible of a source than Trump's butt boy, Tony Ornato. And so, you know, this kind of goes on and on. And, and, and Jocelyn has, you know, more of the details on that. But again, he, he's creating this alternate universe, right, where the January 6th patriots did the right thing and that they were right and good and that Donald Trump wanted this and that the bad guys are the deep state and the FBI and something like this and anybody that spoke out against Trump and that when he gets back in, uh, he will have a presidency that is committed to revenge on behalf of these rioters uh, where the people who are actually punished and actually targeted are not the supposed patriots but the people that told the truth about Donald Trump's actions. It is such an inversion and bastardization of the sense of patriotism and what is what is real patriotism, the real patriotism that was shown by Liz Cheney and Cassidy Hutchinson and Sarah Matthews and others who have really cost themselves their careers by speaking out, um, young women that worked for Trump who spoke out while the you know, supposedly brave, courageous men that they worked for, you know, cowered in fear like Mark Meadows and cried in the corner because they didn't, Mr. Trump wasn't happy with them. Um, and, and that perversion of patriotism, that demand that the people that did the right thing be punished and that, that did the wrong thing be rewarded if he gets back in um, is just a critical element to understanding what, Trump would have in store if he got back in another time. Okay, we'll be back with more on this, on other issues on this feed this week. Make sure you're subscribed to the page. Tell your pals. We'll see you back here soon. Hey, if you like this video and our content, I'd love for you to become a Bulwark Plus member. You get bonus podcasts. Uh, you get bonus newsletters. You get bonus takes from me that maybe don't come up on the YouTube feed. Um, you can try it out for free at thebulwark.com slash free trial. The link is below in the description. Uh, we'd love to have you as a member of our community. Uh, we have great commenters and uh, great opportunities for people who want to protect democracy.